So in this series of screencasts, we will look at a few examples of how to use the Routh array to do a stability analysis. <clears throat> in this simple example, all we're going to do is we're going to use the Routh, uh, sorry, yes, we're going to construct a Routh array from a simple third order polynomial or a very general third order, order polynomial. Okay, so to construct the Routh array, the first thing we do is we fill in the first two rows, a3, a2, a1, a0. And so the first two rows are filled in, and then we apply our formula to the third row. Now the third row, remember, in our nomenclature was made up of these capital A's. So A1 is equal to minus 1 over A2 times the determinant of some matrix M1. Okay, so remember the matrix M will have this as our um, first column. And since we're looking at this element here, these guys here will be my second column of my matrix. <clears throat> so if I want to apply that formula, then my A1 element will be minus 1 over A2. Remember, A2 is this element here, times the determinant of that matrix, which will be A3 times A0 minus A1 times A2. This last element here in this column is a 0. Okay, and so that's my third row. And now we have to make a fourth row. So we have to finish this recursive formula for the last row. And so we, what, what we want to do is we want to fill in this element here. And so to do that, what we have is we have our, um, our B1. Remember, is going to be 1 minus 1, sorry, over A1 times the determinant of its matrix. where A1 was this up here. Okay, actually, oh, sorry, I wrote it down here as well in the second part, or in, the, in the, um, this rewriting of the Routh array. Okay, so if we want to determine what our matrix is, remember we're looking at this element here. It's always the first column being these two elements, so the elements in the first column of the previous two rows. And then, since we're looking at this element here, then these two elements will form the second column of my matrix M. Let's just get rid of those. Okay, so to do that, let's go ahead and write that down. So minus 1 over A1. Minus 1 over A1 is A2 over A3, A0 minus A1, A2. Okay, then you have your determinant term and your determinant term will be a2 times 0, right? That's this guy times this guy, minus a0 times this one here, a0 times negative 1 over a2 times a3, a0 minus a1, a2. Okay, now note, this last term here, this B1, is actually just equal to A0, so things start to cancel out, so this cancels out because there's a 0 times the A2. And then this guy here is A1, but this guy here is minus 1 over A1. So they cancel out to give you a negative 1, and you multiply that onto the negative A0, and you just get A0 out. Okay, so that's our fourth row. And you can't do any more rows here because everything after this um, row becomes zero. So in the end, if you wanted to do a stability analysis using this Routh array, you would have to have, first of all, all coefficients being positive. So you know a3, a2, a1, a0 are all positive. Otherwise, you wouldn't even bother putting together the Routh array. And second, every element in this column has to be positive. We have a3, a2, and a0 all being elements of the first column. And they are all positive, as you know. So the only criterion here for the stability of this system, that is the only criterion that, that would force every single root of this polynomial to, be, to have a positive real part, would be that this guy right here is greater than zero. In other words, this determinant here must be less than zero. And that would be how you would apply this particular 
um, Routh array to your problem.